Today we're going to talk about derivatives. Now in calculus you have three big things that you do, three big operations. You have limits, derivatives, and integrals. And so far we've talked about limits, but derivatives and integrals are defined in terms of limits. So that's why we had to talk about limits first. So what is a derivative? Well there's a few ways that we can think about derivatives, but we'll, we're going to begin with the idea of slope. So later we'll talk about derivatives in terms of rates of change. But we're going to think about it for now in terms of slope. So let's begin with recalling what is the slope of a line. So back in algebra, you talk about how you find the slope of a line. And remember that to find the slope of a line, if you pick any two points along the line, so let's say let's pick these two points and calculate the rise and the run. So in this case, it looks like the rise is 2 and the run is 4. The rise over the run will be the slope. So in this case, we have 2 over 4, which reduces to 1 half. So this line has a slope of 1 half. And you get that same slope no matter which two points you pick on the graph. You could pick two points that are very far away, two points that are really close to, close together. Any way you do it, if you calculate that ratio of the rise over the run, you're always going to get a ratio of 1 half. So the slope of this line is 1 half. But what if we have a curve? Okay, is it possible to talk about the slope of a curve? Okay, well, there's no one number that's going to represent the slope of this whole curve, but we could talk about at various points along the curve, how steep is the curve? Okay, what is the slope at a particular point? And in this case, we're going to talk about what's called the slope of the tangent line. Okay, in Desmos, I've drawn the graph of f of x equals x squared plus 1. And I've plotted the point 1 comma 2. So if you plug in 1 for x, f of 1 you can see is 2. And notice that the height of the point, how high the point is above 1, is 2. One question we could ask, though, is what is the slope of the graph there at 1 comma 2? And notice uh, what we're asking for, really, is what is the slope of the tangent line to the graph at 1 comma 2? Now, I could pick a different point besides 1 comma 2. Let's go to 2 comma 5. Notice the slope of that blue line, the slope of the tangent line, is different. Now it looks like it's a little steeper at 2 comma 5 than it was at 1 comma 2. Okay, or we could go to 3 comma 10. Okay, and ask what is the slope of that tangent line, that blue line at 3 comma 10. If we go to 0, okay, it looks like we get a horizontal tangent line. So the slope there looks like it is 0. If we go back here, it looks like we're getting negative slopes. Okay, so a question we can ask is, how do we find the slope of that tangent line? How steep is that blue line right there? Okay, well, f of 3 equals 10. What that means is that if we go to 3, this point is at a height of 10. But f prime of 3 is going to be 6. Now, f prime of 3, that's the derivative of f at 3, is 6. What that means is that the slope of this blue line, the slope of the tangent line, is 6 there. So the slope of the graph is 6. Now, how did I know it's 6? Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. We have to know a little bit more about derivatives before I can tell you how I know the slope there is 6. But f prime of 3 equals 6, what that means is that the derivative of f at 3 is 6, or the slope of the tangent line is 6. Now, we could move this point here. So if we move to, say, 2 comma 5, Notice now the height of the point is 5, right? f of 2 is 5. That's how high the point is above the x-axis there. But the slope is actually 4. Okay, the slope of that blue line is not 5. The slope is actually 4. So in other words, f prime of 2 is 4, or the derivative of f at 2 is 4. And again, how do I know it's 4? Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now let's look at another example. So I've drawn another function here. I'm not giving you the formula here for this function uh, f, but we could ask what is the slope of the tangent line at various points along the curve? So for example, at 2. Okay, so at 2, the height of the, the, the point is up there at a height of, I don't know, that's maybe like 2.6. So f of 2 would be like 2.6. But what is f prime of 2? Well, f prime of 2 is going to represent the slope of the tangent line there. We can maybe estimate the slope there. It looks like a, a slope of, it's going to be a negative slope because we're trending downward here. But a, a, a slope of negative 1 would mean if we go to the right one, we go down 1. But it doesn't look like we're quite that steep. I think this is maybe a slope of like negative 1 half. So what that would mean would be that f prime of 2 would be negative 1 half. Now, again, to figure it out exactly, we would need to have a formula for our function, and we need to know about derivatives and how you take derivatives. 
But for now, we're just trying to think about this conceptually. I've drawn another function in Desmos here, and we're going to call this function f. And let's pick a point along this curve, and let's draw in the tangent line to the graph at that point. Okay, so we can move the point to various places along the curve, but let's move it back to the original spot that we had it right here. Okay, now one of the things we could ask is, what is the slope of that blue line? How do we find the slope of the tangent line, the slope of the blue line? Suppose we're given the a formula for the function f. How could we find the slope of that blue line? So what we're going to do, first of all, is label the x-coordinate of that point c. Okay, and so this point up here is really c comma f of c. So the y-coordinate over here, this would be f of c. Okay, and then the next thing that we're going to do to approximate the slope of the blue line is to pick another point along our curve and we're going to want to pick this point not way over here, but somewhere kind of close to the original point. And we're going to draw in what's called a secant line. Okay, we're going to draw the secant line that connects these two points. So any line that connects two points along a graph is called a secant line of the graph. And notice that both the secant line and the tangent line, they both go through this point C comma F of C. But notice the slopes are not exactly the same. We could think of the secant line, the slope of the secant line, as kind of an approximation of the slope of the tangent line. But in this case, it's not a very good approximation. The slope of the tangent line looks quite a bit steeper than the slope of the secant line. But the problem is that this point is not very close to the original point. If I were to take this point and move it along the curve so that it's closer to the original point, we're going to get a better approximation. In fact, let's do that. If we pick that second point, and we move it closer and closer to the first point, notice what's happening to the secant line and the tangent line. The secant line is getting closer and closer to the tangent line. In particular, the slope of the secant line is approximating the slope of the tangent line as that second point moves closer and closer to the first point. Now let me get rid of the tangent line for a second here. Notice what happens if that second point were to actually lie on top of the first point, right? So not just get closer and closer, but what if we were to lie on top of it? Well, notice that the secant line goes away because you can't take a line between a point and itself, right? You need two different points in order to be able to draw a line. So we can't get the tangent line by just taking the second point to actually be the first point. We're going to approximate the slope of the tangent line by letting this point approach the first point. So a limit is going to be involved. Now let's label the x-coordinate of this second point c plus h. So the distance between these two points, the horizontal distance between these two points is going to be h. And so if this is c plus h down here, the point up here will be c plus h comma f of c plus h. So the x-coordinate of that point is c plus h. The y-coordinate is f of c plus h. So what is the slope between these two points? Well, we need to calculate the rise and the run between the two points. Well, the run is pretty straightforward. The run is just going to be h. That's that horizontal distance between the two points. But what is the rise? Well, the rise, this little distance here, can be thought of as this big distance from the x-axis here at c plus h all the way up to this point, this big distance minus this distance here. Okay, in other words, this little distance is going to be f of c plus h, which is this large height right here, minus f of c, which is the smaller height. So let's put that in here. And let me remove those labels to make it less cluttered here. So what is the slope of this secant line? Well, the slope of the secant line is rise over run. It's f of c plus h minus f of c, which is this height, divided by h. That's the slope of the secant line. Now, to find the slope of the tangent line, what we need to do is to take the limit as h approaches 0 of this. So notice as h approaches 0, what that means is this second point moves closer and closer to the first point, right? The horizontal distance between the two points is getting closer and closer to 0. So the slope of the tangent line is defined to be, so remember we're using f prime of c to denote the slope of the tangent line at c, it's defined to be the limit as h approaches 0 of this difference quotient, right, which represents the slope of the secant line. So that's how you find the slope of the tangent line. You take the limit as h approaches 0 of the slope of the secant line. Now, just to see some actual numbers here, if we look at the, the rise and the run, we could calculate the slope. 
And as we let that second point approach the first point, notice that the slope, that ratio of the rise over the run, is going to be getting closer and closer to something. In fact, it looks like it's getting closer and closer to about 3. Okay, as we let it approach 0, it's getting closer and closer to about 3. Now, again, the distance between the point and itself we could even go to the left of the point, look at the point down there, but the distance between a point and itself is going to be undefined. Okay, but as we go get closer and closer to that point, it looks like the slopes are approaching three. Okay, so the slope of the tangent line would be three. So we have this definition. Suppose f is a function, the derivative of f at c, denoted by f prime of c is defined by this, and this is what we just looked at. f prime of c is the limit as h approaches zero of f of c plus h minus f of c all over h. And this part right here, this f of c plus h minus f of c over h is sometimes referred to as a difference quotient. It's a difference because we have a subtraction in the numerator, and it's a quotient because we're dividing. So f prime of c is the limit of this difference quotient. And when the limit exists, we say that f is differentiable at c. So again, f prime of c is the slope of the tangent line at x equals c. So let's look at an example. And we've already looked at this function, f of x equals x squared plus 1. How could we find f prime of 2? Here, f prime of 3. So let's go down and look at this function here. Notice f of 2 is 5, right? You can just plug it in, right? f of 2, plug it in, we get 2 squared plus 1. So before plus 1, f of 2 is 5. How do we find f prime of 2? Well, we're going to need to use the definition. Okay, so uh, f of x is x squared plus 1. How do we find f prime of 2? Well, remember, f prime of c was the limit as h approaches 0 of f of c plus h minus f of c all over h. So we're going to plug in 2 for c. Okay, so f prime of 2 is going to equal the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 2 plus h minus f of 2, all divided by h. Okay, so it'll be the limit as h approaches 0 of, well, first of all, what is f of 2 and what is f of 2 plus h? Well, f of 2 we just found, right? It wasn't f of 2, 5. Okay, what is f of 2 plus h? Well, remember, f of x is x squared plus 1. So what is f of 2 plus h? Well, we need to plug in 2 plus h for x. So f of 2 plus h is going to be 2 plus h squared plus 1. Now, what is 2 plus h squared? It's not just 2 squared plus h squared. Remember, we have to FOIL this out. 2 plus h times 2 plus h and then plus 1. Well, if we work this out, 2 times 2 is 4. We have a 2h from the inside two terms, a 2h from the outside. That's 4h plus h squared plus 1. So this is really h squared plus 4h plus 5. Okay, so that's what f of 2 plus h is. So again, to find f of anything, like if we wanted to find f of 10, well, we'd have to plug in 10 squared plus 1, or f of t, it'd be t squared plus 1. f of anything is just going to be that thing squared plus 1. So what's f of 2 plus h? Well, it'll be 2 plus h squared plus 1. Okay, so what we got when we simplified it was h squared plus 4h plus 5. But notice here in the numerator, the 5s subtract out and we just get h squared plus 4h over h. Now, the question is, what's this limit? Well, notice if you just plug in 0, you're going to get 0 over 0. Okay, so what do we do? Well, we need to factor out the h from the numerator, and we factor it out as h times h plus 4 over h. And now, when we cancel these h's, at this point now, we just have, what's, we have the limit as h approaches 0 of h plus 4, and now we can just plug in 0 for h, and we get 4. Okay, so f prime of 2 is 4. What that means is if we, if we were to go to the graph and look at the point 2, comma 5, okay, that's the point 2, comma 5, what is the slope of the tangent line there? What is the slope of that tangent line? Well, the slope is 4. Okay, the slope is, is, is 4 because f prime of 2 is 4. Okay, how could we find f prime of 3? Well, we could go through the exact same thing. Okay, f prime of 3 is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 all divided by h. And we go through the same process here. We get the limit as h approaches 0 of, well, it turns out f of 3 would be 10. 
And what about f of 3 plus h? Well, we'd have to plug this in. We get 3 plus h squared plus 1. If we work out the details, it's going to be h squared plus 6h plus 9 plus 1. Okay, I did this kind of fast, but again, you can kind of work out the, the details. f of 3 plus h is going to be h squared plus 6h plus 10. Okay, so if we plug it in here, h squared plus 6h plus 10, that's what f of 3 plus h is, right? That's what we're plugging in here. Again, notice the tens are going to go away and we're going to get the exact same thing that we had before, but we're going to have h squared plus 6h over h. Both of those terms that remain in the top will have an h so we can factor it out and write this as h plus 6. Notice again, if we just plug in zero, we're going to get zero over zero, but not once we cancel these, we have the limit as h approaches zero of h plus 6. And now when we plug in zero, we just get six. Okay, so f prime of three, okay, f prime of three is six. And again, what that tells you about the graph is if you go up, this point three comma 10 is on the graph. Okay, f of three is 10, but f prime of three is six. Okay, the slope of this is six. Okay, now what about f prime of x? Is there a way to do this generically, just for a generic value of the input, rather than two or three? Could we find it for a generic value? And this is gonna be called the derivative function. Okay, so let's do this. And this is gonna be probably the most important case here. What is f prime of x? Okay, well, remember f prime of c, f prime of c is the limit as h approaches zero of f of c plus h minus f of c all over h. So what is f prime of x? Well, we're just going to plug in c, or I'm sorry, we're going to plug in x for c. So instead of f of c plus h, it'll be f of x plus h. Instead of f of c, it'll be f of x. And we're going to work this out. Okay, we're going to take this limit. So what is this limit going to be? Well, we have the limit as h approaches 0 of... Now, the, the thing we're going to need to find is what is f of x plus h. Now, f of x was just x squared plus 1. And we should put this in parentheses because we're not just subtracting the x squared, we're subtracting the whole thing, x squared plus one. But what is f of x plus h? Now again, remember f of x was x squared plus one. What is f of x plus h? Now this is not the same thing as f of x and then plus h. Okay, it's, it's not, in other words, it's not the same thing as f of x plus h like this. Okay, that's not what we're looking at. What we're looking at is f of x plus h. Okay, so what, what that means is in place of x here, whoops, let me go back to my thing here. In place of x, we need to put x plus h. Okay, so like if we wanted to find f of 5, we'd do 5 squared plus 1. f of 1.2 would be 1.2 squared plus 1. f of a would be a squared plus 1. f of star would be star squared plus 1. What's f of x plus h? It'd be x plus h squared plus 1. Okay, and if we work out the details, this would be x plus h times itself plus one. Now what is x plus h times x plus h if you FOIL that out? Well, x times x is x squared. You're going to get an xh from the inside two terms and another xh from the outside two terms. That's 2xh. And last of all, you have h times h is h squared, and we still have the plus one here. So f of x plus h would be x plus h squared plus one. So it's this big long formula here. And by the way, I know this is confusing and complicated. We're going to find a much simpler way to do this than to have to calculate these uh, examples like this, uh, calculate these directly using a limit. But I just want to show this process a, a couple times so you can get a feel for, for what we're doing before we do the, the easier way. Okay, so that is what our f of x plus h is, was this. Now let's do the limit. Okay, well, notice we have an x squared and we're going to have a minus x squared. Those are going to go away. We have a 1 and we have a minus 1. Those are going to go away. We have two terms left in the top, 2xh and h squared, and both of those terms have an h in them. So what we're going to do is factor out the h. Okay, so 2x times h would be 2xh. h times h would be h squared. And by the way, if you plug in 0 for h, oh, and we're plugging in 0 for h. We're not plugging it in for x here. Right? We're not taking the limit as x approaches 0. We're taking the limit as h approaches 0. If we were to plug in 0 everywhere we see an h, we'd get 0 over 0 at this point. But once we cancel these h's, we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h. And now if we plug in 0, and again, remember we're plugging it in for h, not for x, we get 2x. 
Okay, 2x is called the derivative function. f prime of x is 2x. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means we can find f prime of any number. Well, what's f prime of 3? Well, it'd be 2 times 3 is 6. Didn't we already find that out? f prime of 3 was 6, right? What was f prime of 2? f prime of 2 was 2 times 2 was 4, right? Now we can figure out the slope at any point, all right? If we want to find what's the slope of the tangent line at uh, minus 1 comma 2, well, what we need to do is find f prime of minus 1. And we could do it the old-fashioned way, right, this way, of, of figuring out for every specific value, or we could do it for a generic value of x and then plug in the number, right? So, so if, what if we want to find what's f prime of minus 1? Again, we could do it like we did these ones here, plugging in the minus 1 there, or we could just use what we already have here. f prime of x is 2x, so f prime of minus 1, f prime of minus 1 would be 2 times minus 1, which is minus 2. The slope of the tangent line there is negative 2. This slope there has a, is a negative 2 slope. Okay, that's called the derivative function. Okay, the derivative function. So the derivative is really a function of x. We have this f prime of c, we define it like this. But if we just use uh, a generic value, x, f prime of x will be this. Okay, so what is the derivative of the function x squared plus 1? Well, the derivative, f prime of x, is 2x. Now, again, we're going to learn tricks. Now, this was a long process to find f prime of x, right? We had to do the limit as h approaches 0. We had to figure out what's f of x plus h minus f of x over h. That was a pain. Well, you're going to get to the point where you know the derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x in less than a half a second. Uh, I mean, a quarter of a second, a tenth of a second. You'll know, oh, yeah, the derivative is 2x. You'll know it immediately. We're going to learn tricks and rules for taking derivatives in a quick way so that you don't have to go through this long, laborious process that we just went through.